Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and welcome to this video on reactions of metal aqua ions. So in this video we're going to look at transi transition metal complexes and their reactions with hydroxide and ammonia. We're also going to look at the reactions with carbonates as well and uh, finally we're going to look at two examples of amphoteric hydroxides as well. So we're going to start with the reactions with hydroxides and ammonia first. So we're going to look at um, a, some, a few examples and see what happens and explain why they're happening as well. So here we've got a metal hydroxide, a metal, sorry, a metal hexa aqua complex. Uh, this is obviously in solution uh, and has a two plus charge. Now normally when it's in, as it exists in water, it would exist in this equilibrium here. And it's in equilibrium with its hydroxide form. And you can see here that we've got H2O5 and an OH with a positive charge. Now, remember, waters have no charge whatsoever. So uh, if we have six neutral ligands around a 2 plus metal ion, then the overall complex will be 2 plus. But when it's in equilibrium with its uh, monohydroxide, which is over here, then you can see that the hydroxide has got a negative charge. And because the ligand is negatively charged, it has an effect on the overall charge of the complex. So you can see we've got five neutrals, one negative, the metal ion was a 2 plus ion in the, at the start, so the overall charge of the complex would be a positive charge. It's still dissolved in solution, and for complexes to be uh, soluble, they have to have a charge. And because this one still has a charge, it's still in solution. And so if we add a hydroxide to this, like an alkali, then we've got a bit of lichitinia coming into it as well. And what will happen is if we add hydroxide to this, it will react with this um, hydroxonium ion, which is H3O+, plus, it'll react with that, uh, and obviously this will reduce the amount of hydroxonium ion, which is H3O+, plus, that's left, and so equilibrium will shift to the right to replace it when we add hydroxides, and that is why that we form this compound here. If we add a little bit more hydroxide, though, we can have this compound. You can see I've brought this same uh, complex here, and I've brought it down here. It's the same one. And if we add more base to it, then it pushes the equilibrium even further. And what we start to form is this, which is a metal dihydroxide. And all we've done is we've um, removed another proton from the uh, water ligand. And we've formed, instead, instead of one OH, we've now got two OHs. And so the overall charge on this is zero. And because it doesn't have a charge, that makes it insoluble in solution. And so that's why we've got a solid um, state symbol on the end there. So we should see a coloured precipitate bond. In this case, it's iron 2 plus, so there should be a green precipitate that's formed. So this is really important, though. No charge in the complex means it's insoluble. Same with 3 plus ions as well, except I've just combined this into one equation. But we have our metal H2O6 complex, which is over here. It has a 3 plus charge. If we have three lots of, um, well, normally when it exists in, in solution, uh, it will exist in this form, but it's the same uh, uh, idea with Lichtenia's principle. If we add hydroxide ions, it will react with these. These will get used up, and so equilibrium will shift to the right to replace the lost hydroxonium ions that were there when you add hydroxide ions. And again, we form our solid uh, precipitate. But just to note, because this is a 3 plus ion, you do need more hydroxide ions to uh, turn it into the insoluble um, hydroxide complex and you can see here because it's a three plus we have h2o3 oh3 solid as opposed to two plus ions where we had h2o4 oh2 so we need that little bit more base to neutralize uh, this acid here ammonia is uh, behaves in the same way as well and ammonia doesn't actually have any hydroxides of its own unlike sodium hydroxide so effectively the ammonia reacts with water when it's dissolved in solution and it forms ammonium ions and hydroxide ions. And because the ammonia will produce hydroxide ions when it reacts with the water, this hydroxide ion will have, then have the same effect as we described above. So that's why ammonia works in the same way as well. Okay, so we're just going to go into reaction with carbonates. Now, carbonates uh, have the formula CO3 2 minus. And this is really important because we get two different products depending on if our uh, transition metal ion is 2 plus charge or three plus charge. So we'll start with this one here. Here's our M2 plus ions. They form what we call metal carbonates and ligand substitution occurs. So for example, we've got an iron 
uh, hexa aqua 2 plus complex, which is here. And if we react that with the carbonate ion, uh, what happens is we form our amethyl carbonate, which is iron carbonate here, and we form uh, six lots of water. This is a solid because it doesn't have a charge. So this is in solution, but this is a solid, no charge on there. So therefore, you'll see a precipitate that's formed of iron carbonate. If we go into the M3 plus ions, these form a different compound, and these are metal hydroxides, and the carbonate behaves as a base this time. So we've got some examples here. So there's our iron hexa aqua complex like we had before, except we have a 3 plus charge. But when we react it with our carbonate, which is CO3 2 minus, we don't actually form metal carbonate. We form this FeH2O3 OH3. -OH -OH now, what's happened here is the carbonate has effectively taken three protons from the um, from three of the water ligands and it's turned them into OH minus ligands. And so that's why we've got three waters left and three OH3s. We form a precipitate as well. This is a solid, a bit like before, but it's not a carbonate that we formed. It's actually an insoluble hydroxide. Uh, and this is, uh, this is a solid because it has no charge on the complex. We also see carbon dioxide gas being given off and water. So effectively, this is just an acid carbonate reaction. This is an acid, this is a carbonate, and that will give us salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. It's just acid plus carbonate in disguise. Now, this is really important because we need to know why this happens as well. And the explanation for it is written down here in red. So metal three plus ions are more acidic than metal two plus ions. Now, if you're not sure why, there is a video that looks into Lewis acids and Lewis bases. You just click on the link below and you can have a look at that. But for this purpose, I'll assume you know what that means, why it's more acidic. So these ones are more acidic, and so therefore the carbonate acts as a base when it's reacting uh, with three plus ions and therefore produces carbon dioxide and water. But when it reacts with two plus ions, it's, uh, this is a lot weaker and so therefore the carbonate acts as a ligand and it undergoes ligand substitution. So all the waters are kicked off and then we have a carbon uh, the carbonate group bonding directly with the iron with no more water ligands attached to it. And that's really important to be able to explain that. It's about the strength of the acid acting as a base for M3 plus ions and acting as a ligand for M2 plus ions. Okay, if we look at the last one, which is am amphoteric hydroxide, then the word amphoteric means acts as an acid and a base. So it does both. And there's two examples that we need to know here. One of them is aluminium hydroxide, and the other one is chromium hydroxide. Now, you have to uh, be careful with some of the formulas of these. Some exam boards are looking for different formulas, and it is worth checking to make sure you know what formulas they're after, because this is a very simplified version of what I've done here. So we're going to start with aluminium hydroxide. Now, aluminium is not a transition metal, However, it does form complexes, uh, and it can uh, form different substances um, when you react it with an acid and when you react it with a base. So we're going to start with it here. Here's your aluminium um, hydroxide here. Again, it's a solid precipitate. Aluminium's got a 3 plus charge, so therefore it forms a trihydroxide complex, which is this one here, because we've got three hydroxides. It will react with an acid and effectively the uh, aluminium hydroxide is acting as a base in this case, and so therefore it will accept protons, so this is a bronsted lari base, uh, it will accept protons from the acid, and it will form six waters. So effectively these three hydroxides have accepted a proton each, and they've formed six waters as a, as, a, as a result of that. On the opposite side though, it can also act as an acid, and when we react it with hydroxide ions, as you can see here, then um, the we get this product, which is aluminium hydroxide, um, but it's a, a tetrahydroxide complex. Uh, and so this is AlH2O2, OH4 minus. And you can see here, because this is neutral, it is a solid and it's a precipitate, but we are actually forming a negative charge because we've got an extra hydroxide attached onto our complex. And so this, this means that the precipitate will actually dissolve. So we start with the solid and it effectively dissolves to form that complex over there. Now, in reality, uh, you can get OH5 and OH6 as well, uh, and it can keep on going like that, but it exists in equilibrium, and really the most stable form is this form here. Most examples will expect you to see that, or just OH4 minus, 
And the reason why is I've just got a small model just to show you here. And you can see we have, imagine the middle bit, move it over here. So imagine the middle bit as your aluminium atom. Uh, and then we have uh, four hydroxide ions that are dotted around here. So if I tip it up like that. Uh, and you can see on the top here, we have two water ligands. Now these ones normally stay where they are. And so we form aluminium OH4 minus, or OH4, and then two waters on the um, axis of the atom there. But you just need to know that structure. The actual reasons behind it are pretty complex and not required for A-level. Okay, so if we just look at our last example, which is chromium hydroxide. So chromium, again, if we react it with an acid, so um, the chromium hydroxide, like aluminium, is a three plus charge. So we have OH3, uh, reacts with the acid, and it will form a six a hexa aqua complex. This is a solid. This is dissolved because it's got a charge, so it's now soluble in solution. Uh, we form 3H2O. So this is acting as a base, but we can also make it act as an acid. So when we take the same complex and react it with hydroxide ions, we form a chromium hexa hydroxide ion here, which is a three minus charge. But unlike the aluminium, where really we can only partially substitute our water, we always have two left. With the chromium, it goes all the way and we have six hydroxides around our complex with three waters left behind. So you've really got to know these uh, formulas. And um, they can be a bit strange because they form different types of complexes. But um, if you just try and remember them, and they'll get you loads of marks in the exam. But um, that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.